A Forest of Dreams. This is a play on the movie A Field of Dreams. And the basic concept there was if they built it, they would come. This concept is similar in that I believe that if I live my dream, people will find me and help me realize my dream. My dream of a forest is about restoration. I use the word restoration because I want to reject the word sustainability. Sustainability or sustainable forestry would reduce it to something simple like the number of trees or the amount of growth or something like that. And I know from data that we have collected, uh, empirical data from uh, institutes of higher learning, that the forest is in a state of decline. If you average out every log that's sawed today, there are less clear boards coming out of that log than there were 30 years ago. So I don't understand how you can sustain a decline. It's either staying the same, getting better, or getting worse. So our concept is that if your forestry is going to be sustainable, it has to be restorative. Restorative means imitating nature, identifying the worst trees first, and selecting them as individuals with precise, skilled identity, felling, and extraction. And that's what this story is about. My dream is for you to see that you can restore every forest in your community by doing restorative forestry the way we practice it. S uh, single tree selection, uh, using nature's tree marking paint indicators, which is a system of identifying which trees are not productive or not uh, highly productive, and skill directional felling, and the ultimate low impact overland extraction technique of horse logging. So yes, I'm here about horse logging. Um, something that I want to say too is I think that there's a great disconnect between uh, the notion of sustainability and low income. If you could get rich being sustainable, everybody would already be doing it. The point is that in order to be sustainable, you need to uh, have a more humble life, have a more uh, uh, lower demand on the resources of the world around you, and I think that's a lot of what uh, TED is about. And I, I should have started by saying thank you to the local people that organize this event, and thank you for TED, whoever TED is, for putting on this wonderful opportunity to share our story and tell our stories. Because this is basically what I'm going to do here, is try to tie a few stories together uh, about my life and, and what I do. Uh, I actually was uh, uh, born to a sharecropper's daughter in 1950 and raised by a man that couldn't read or write. But his cultural skills uh, gave him a place in this world by being able to farm and work with animals. So I grew up moving from farm to farm during that transitional time when, when our population was being shifted from the rural parts of the country into the urban centers. And I was fortunate to have that relationship uh, uh, and guidance of a man who found dignity in his ability to grow food and to use the horses and the animals, the mules and the oxen, as a part of a of his ability to do that. I keep looking back because this is supposed to change in a, uh, once a minute and I guess it will change in a moment. Um, so I have this time warp thing of being raised by a man that was born in the, the, the 1900s, the early 1900s, and, and living a life that started in the beginning of this 20, 20th century of 1950, and being here today in 2013 when I'm wanting to use my experience to share with the TED audience and my local audience as to how I got to where I am being a restorative forestry practitioner uh, today. Um, I, uh, you know, I, I love the horses. Uh, the, the horses uh, uh, present a, a wonderful opportunity uh, to, uh, to, to be alive. They are a, certainly a, limited, a limiting capacity of production, but in many ways they have uh, many benefits that aren't uh, uh, entered into the economics of trying to understand uh, the value of what they do. Um, you know, uh, they, uh, the horses uh, are uh, renewable. Uh, they, they actually can replace themselves. No one has ever found a baby horse or a baby tractor in the barn the next morning. <laughs> the, the horses are actually able to replace themselves. This is a stallion that I raised, uh, that our family raised, that was a sire on our farm for, for uh, uh, 18 years, uh, had many offspring. Um, the horses, uh, 
Uh, and this, when I say horses, I don't want to take away from animal power because there are mules and there are oxen. Uh, and in fact, in Asia, the logging is done with elephants. Animal power. The point is that we have thousands of years of cultural investment by humankind into the development of the skills of being able to have a beneficial relationship with animals to address our needs. And we shouldn't just dismiss and discard or throw away those thousands of years of, of evolvement because of the presence of cheap intensive energy for 75 years. Oil has certainly saved labor, but it doesn't deserve the power to erase uh, animal uh, power and that culture. It's a vital, proven instrument that should remain a part of the human toolbox for the future. Because we all know that the oil is finite, that it is probably damaging, that it is uh, uh, something we have no control over. So these animals offer to us a, an amazing amount of independence. Uh, the, the fact that they operate on solar fuel in the form of hay and grass and grain, and the, the fact that they are self-repairing, that when they injure themselves with a little cultural care, they fix themselves. No machine fixes itself. The fact that they can learn what they're doing and operate by remote control. You can speak to them. That's pretty high tech. How many of you have a machine that you can talk to that will do things for you? I know we have some, and we have uh, a history in this county with voice recognition software, but this is something that can, can work to, to uh, um, to do what you ask just for the asking because you humble yourself to live that life with these living creatures. Um, so I do this because I believe that it is a superior way of doing things, not because I want to go back in the past or, or not because I was raised by a man that was born in 1905. I do it because I'm a modern man living today and seeing that, that this is a part of the future. Um, I've uh, worked to develop my dream, my forest of dreams, through several uh, different um, formulas or strategies. And those are Draftwood and Healing Harvest Forest Foundation. Draftwood is basically a brand name that is used to establish a source differentiated identity for our forest products as coming from horse log lumber from restorative forestry, not from clear cutting and mechanized harvesting. So it gives the consumer an opportunity to support this kind of work by making a conscious choice by what they buy for forest products. And I have to add at this very moment that this floor that I'm standing on and all of this trim that is in this building and the white pine that is in these timber frames came from our work. You're in a... So it may not happen fast, but you can address human needs with animal power. And in fact, I should go back to say that Healing Harvest Forest Foundation mission statement is to address human needs for forest products while creating a nurturing coexistence between the forest and the human community. And the subliminal message there is the singular use of the word community because we are one. The, the forest is the largest landscape condition in the eastern United States. Over 60% of our land cover is forested. The forest is the greatest way for us to mitigate the impact of, of uh, climate change because it sequesters carbon out of the atmosphere. As my son said excitedly once after coming home from a, a sophomore biology class, Dad, the trees are the lungs of the planet. That was a wonderful thing. They are indeed. They inhale what we exhale. They are providing ecological services that are benefit for the common good that we are not currently paying for on a day-to-day -day basis. They provide shade, they provide wind protection, they filter every drop of water we drink. One of the greatest sayings that has ever helped me as a forester and as a commercial production person that makes my living by converting a forest to a commodity of logs or lumber is understanding that the greatest and most valuable product to come out of any forest is the water. The water filtration of the forest is a tremendous benefit that, that we don't normally pay for. So I work hard through my organization and with my peers to define the forest as something of precious value to us that we are not currently totally paying for. And that's what the quality of services of our work is about. And that's how I defend my detractors who say, horse logging is labor intensive, it's too slow, the production is marginal. Well, believe me, 
uh, individual landowners who live in the forest of my community are very happy about the results of the work that we do as the forest being an improved situation by leaving the best trees to grow as long and healthy as possible and removing the trees that are low productive and doing it with minimum impact. That's exactly what the logs do. That's exactly what the horse loggers do. Now, I've kind of, uh, I'm gonna play you a little video here. Uh, this is the horses pulling a log out right down the road. Uh, it's probably some of the popper is, uh, is used. This, this is just a team of horses pulling a 680 foot, 4,000 pound log out of the woods just for the asking. That's, it's, that's a simplification, but it is exactly what is going on there in, the, in, the, in essence. It's a relationship between humans and animals that, are, that is beneficial. Um, th this is a, and, and the nice thing, a nice thing about this whole experience and the opportunity to share it with the TED audience all over the world is that young people who are resistant to a lot of things that are going on in the modern world. I'm not going to say the purple hair, face jewelry, lost young people, but the rebels, the rebels that need clues. Here are ways to do things differently. This is a living rebellion. This is rage against the machine. This is a way of doing things differently and making the world around you and your community a better place. It is not the easy way. We've never implied, never suggested that this was for everyone. This is an athletic experience where you have to have the endurance of a marathoner and, and the environmental ethic of, of, a, of a Tibetan monk. <laughs> this is not easy stuff to do. This is not an easy way to live, but we do it. We have been featured in all sorts of national publicity. This is a film uh, uh, here of, uh, and there was an early one. Did you play the early, early, other early one there too? This is eight horses pulling a 52 foot long log that's used for uh, a timber frame structure at the Warm Hearth Retirement Village in Blacksburg, Virginia. This was when we were being filmed for History Channel's Axemen. And we all know, especially the TED crowd, that reality TV ain't real. <laughs> and, but that's real, and that's probably why we weren't picked up for the second season, because we, <laughs> we couldn't be talked into doing silly stuff that made it us uh, entertainment for for modern TV watchers, fill in the blanks is what you think of them. Um, help us make this forest a dream that we can all share. Thank you, TED Talk. Thank you, Floyd County.